she just felt like she was living the all American dream. Now she was married to a military guy, you know, a Marine. Unfortunately, <sighs> All of the honeymoon stage came to a screeching halt very, very quickly. Within the first month, John started allegedly, according to Lorena, becoming physical with her. He would, you know, yell at her and just kind of put her down. It was something she was totally shocked by. She'd never seen her father treating her mom like that. And now here's this guy that she's absolutely in love with. Stuff like that continued to happen. And then in 1991, John was discharged from the military. Anyway, so after he was discharged from the military, he could not find a job. And when he did find a job, he could not hold it down. At this time, Lorena, she's working two jobs and he would come in and he would force himself upon her. Now at this point, John had told her that his friend needed to come stay for a couple weeks. And when his friend comes in, she was like, okay, he's going to, I'm going to make you a spot on the couch. And he goes, no, I'm going to build him a room inside of our apartment. And she was like, but he's only staying a couple weeks. The friend was like, you told me I could live here. It was like this whole entire drama. And when she said, live here, you didn't tell me that. Then of course, John starts yelling at her in front of him. And like, why would you hurt? Like just took it all out on her, made her feel like she had done something wrong. And they leave to go out drinking. Well, she goes to sleep. John comes in around 4 a.m. in the morning and he comes in in the bed with her and he starts to assault her yet again, okay? And she would always cry to him and say, why are you, why would you do this to me? It hurts, you know, she would be, she would be scared and he would always tell her, it doesn't matter, you're my wife. I can have it whenever I want it. And if you leave me, I will sit outside your work. I will always take it. Time goes on, he rolls over on his back, whatever. And she goes into the kitchen to get a glass of water. When she opens the refrigerator, ooh, the light from the refrigerator shines on this big knife that's sitting on the counter. She said she was drinking the water, looking at the knife, and all of these things was going through her mind. The first time he hit her, the second time he hit her, the him telling her she could never get away. He was always gonna take it from her, that he was always gonna do this. She takes the knife, she goes into the bedroom where he's at, she pulls his Johnson up and she slices it off, okay? She takes it and the knife and she leaves the house. She's driving down the road. She's freaking out. She got on her. He was so drunk. He laid there for a minute. He didn't even really realize what happened until the became so much and he felt himself getting wet. So he goes in there. He starts kicking his friend. His friend's so drunk. His friend gets up and brushes his teeth. Finally gets him to the hospital and... You guys, the hospital is freaking out. They'd never seen anything like this. They said like different nurses and doctors testified to when they went into the room, they had this man laying on the stretcher and he's, and the only thing they see is his like, I don't know, and then it completely gone, like cut, cut down to the, to the, to the pelvic bone. Okay. It's completely gone. And the nurses testified later to saying like they thought, Man, what did he do? He had to really, nobody had seen anything like this before. Now, when the 911 dispatchers were talking to each other, this is back in the 19, early 1990s. Like there was, you know, they were, they were afraid to say anything. So they're saying, we're looking for an appendix because they started looking for the members. So you got all these cops now. Anyways, Lorena, she was so out of it and just, you know, whatever. She pulls over on the side of the road where there's a 7-Eleven and she throws it out the window, honey. And then she gets somewhere else and she puts the knife in a trash can. And then she goes to her friend's house. And when she opened the door that, that night, it was at nighttime and she saw the all over, she was like, oh my gosh, what happened? They ended up calling the cops. And so the cops came and got her and took her to the hospital too. So they could do an R kit on her. And they asked her where the member was. And she told them where it was, y'all. When the police went there to go look through the uh, grass to find this thing, literally. They come, they pick it up, they take it to the hospital and he undergoes surgery for nine and a half hours. Now, of course, there becomes a huge media frenzy. This thing goes viral. People are talking about this in all over the world and they're making big jokes about it. I mean, there was, it was on Saturday Night Live, Whoopi Goldberg, she was doing stand-up comedians back then. You know, like everybody was talking about this. Robin Williams, like it was just, it was everywhere. Long story short, he goes to trial, okay, for marital, R word, right? 
And back then the law was if you lived together, it couldn't be that. If you lived separately, it could or something like that. And Lorena was like, so you mean to tell me that he was right? That if he's married to me and lives in the house with me, he can take it whenever time, whenever he wants. And basically that's the way the law was set up back then. So women were supporting Lorena, you know, when they, when her story got out and then she went to trial and her trial was televised, honey. And it was a big, big deal. She was later found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. So what that meant was from all the abuse, from everything she had went through, she went insane for a split second, cut off his member, did all of that. And so she was found innocent. You guys, this is the crazy juicy part. This man, y'all, you want to know where they are now? Let me just tell you where Lorena is. Okay. Lorena in the late 1990s met a man named David and they've been together well over 20 years now. They're not married, however, but they are together and they've been together for all this time. And they have a daughter together named Olivia. John Bobbitt, on the other hand, he is living in Las Vegas not working and he's been married and divorced three times now. Anyways, they raised almost $200,000 y'all. And this is back in the 1990s to have him surgery to get an extension. Anyways, so like I said, he's living in Vegas as last of last year and she's living with her 20 year plus relationship and having a relationship with her daughter. And that's where they're at today. <laughs>